Adrian, thanks for your time to giving us a chance that we ask you some questions because you've got some substantial experience actually here implementing online learning solutions uh, at your institution. And uh, what I would like to know a bit about is about the student's perception. Um, you know, we've, we've had different experiences with that. How do students actually react to online learning when they're used to traditional learning formats? I think there's a, a couple of takeaways that you know, I, I've uh, discovered in my sort of three, four years now of, uh, of doing flipped classroom at NUS. Um, one is that you, you do need to get the buy-in of the students. They do need to, uh, to buy into the, that kind of pedagogy. Um, and that can be done by uh, highlighting the, uh, the, the way that the pedagogy can support improved learning. So they, they, if, if they're told that it, it's going to have some kind of impact in improving the quality of their learning experience, they are um, uh, ready to sort of buy in to, the, uh, to that approach. Um, in terms of perception, then, uh, and uh, uh, what they feel is uh, it, it, the, the different kind of experience in terms of um, getting their content from an online source as opposed to a traditional source, I find that at the beginning of the semester, um, the plurality of students will uh, prefer a traditional approach. That's the kind of experience of expecting when they come to university. However, uh, by the end of the semester, the situation is re reversed. The plurality now prefer the online transmission of content. What I've discovered is, is that there are several reasons for this. Um, number one is they realize that because I'm providing the content online, I'm able to provide an entirely different learning experience in the classroom. And they recognize that the learning experience they get in the classroom is so much better than it is done in a traditional sense. The other things are to do with the fact that they are able to uh, engage that technology um, in their own time. Uh, they can engage in it on the move, um, at home, whenever they've got free time. Uh, they also find that uh, they can do things which they can't do when uh, um, I'm delivering a lecture in a, in, in a lecture theatre. They, uh, they are able to pause my, uh, my online content and go and have a break. They're able to rewind my content and review what I've said. Um, and they're able to speed it up or slow it down. And uh, these are things which they find to be uh, uh, improve the efficiency with which they are able to interact with that kind of content. Okay, excellent. And um, you mentioned that you, you buy, get a buy-in by these enhanced options that they have, but also that they feel that the outcomes are better to some extent, that they've got a profit from that, that they probably have more, well, skills at the end of the training. We, we talked about that earlier, and you mentioned that there's a very interesting finding when you implemented blended, uh, blended classroom and blended learning scenarios, or rather flipped classroom scenarios. Uh, could you tell us a bit about that experience there? Um, I mean, th there is, uh, I mean, one thing, of course, that is interesting for us is, is, is that we've managed to improve the quality of learning. Um, and I'm not here saying that, uh, that the improvement I'm seeing in terms of quality of learning has to do necessarily with online content delivery, but it does very much have to do with the, with the change um, in the, the, the classroom environment and what I'm doing in the classroom. But I do see a, a significant effect size in terms of quality of, of learning. Uh, from the time I was delivering exactly the same course uh, prior to the implementation of Flip Classroom to, uh, to the three, now four years I've, uh, I've been delivering in the Flip Classroom sense, very large effect sizes. So there is definitely, as, as, uh, at least within my own context, uh, a situation where I've seen a, a, a significant improvement in quality of learning. It's also correlated with a significant improvement of students' appreciation of my own teaching in terms of student feedback as well, which is also gratifying. Yeah, that sounds like a win-win situation. Oh yeah, absolutely. And that seems to continue even uh, with regards to final exams. I understand that you recently implemented some online testing, uh, so e-testing. 
options as well? So, so the, the course, the, the primary course in which I've done this kind of approach to, uh, uh, to teaching is uh, a physical chemistry mm -hmm. course. It involves, um, uh, it, it involves a, very, a fair amount of uh, mathematics as, um, where the students are, uh, they're learning about spectroscopy for the first time. Um, students don't necessarily like the mathematical, ma mathematics class. That's one of the reasons why I wanted to change things around. One thing I, I, I did was that because I could change what I was doing in the classroom, I, I was able to change the learning outcomes for the module as, as a whole. One, one important change was um, integrating uh, the use of technology to uh, analyze the spectroscopic data. Um, one of the unfortunate ways that we, we, we we would deal with spectroscopic problems in the past would be that uh, uh, when we ask the students to analyze data and, and retrieve parameters with, of, of physical interest, they would simply do sort of you know, solve a few simultaneous equations. And from that, they would you know, be able to uh, infer certain details of structural molecules and so on. This is not how a spectroscopist works. They will take a lot of spectroscopic data, lots of spectral lines, and they will analyze that using linear regression or nonlinear regression techniques, data analysis techniques. Um, I wanted the students to engage with those kind of techniques and develop those kind of skills, which I wasn't able to do before in a traditional format. So I, some of the classroom activities were workshopping the use of, uh, of technologies that enabled them to do that kind of thing. So, not only am I seeing a, an, an improvement in terms of their, uh, their, their core understanding of spectroscopic principles, the theory of spectroscopy, I was able also to improve the quality of their, their, their data analytics skills, which has a, a, a far more broader and wide ranging uh, <coughs> potential to, uh, you know, in terms of usefulness beyond my module. Okay. Well, that sounds like you have some gains already. Oh, yeah. and just imagine 10 years in the future, will we still be talking about e-learning at all? Or will e-learning be so natural that we regard it as the form of learning? One thing I would say, I, 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 I can see that uh, the technology flip classroom, I, I can see that, a, that, that that will become a lot more widespread. Um, however, I, I'm not a purist. In this, I, I don't see that uh, everything either needs to be flipped classroom or everything needs to be traditional. Um, there are, in my own course, uh, elements which the students engage with far better when I'm in the classroom and I'm getting those kind of non verbal cues about understanding. I'm able to pass around sort of models that they can, they can interact with, which I can't do if I'm just transmitting that knowledge online. So, if there's a, a particular topic that I feel is going to be better suited to a traditional classroom environment, then I'll deliver it. It's, I think the, the bottom line is that um, what do you think, as, as, uh, as a teacher, what do you think is going to be the best for the students? What's going to improve their understanding of your topic? If it can be best done in a lecture theatre, that's fine. If, it, uh, if, if you, uh, however, would like to repurpose your classroom time to engage in more active learning, then flipped classroom is, is definitely a pedagogy that facilitates that kind of thing. It, makes, uh, it, 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 it means that your time with the students is a lot more efficient. You really just focus on, on areas where the students don't understand, as opposed to trying to cover absolutely everything. And for that reason, it seems to work very successfully. So long as, of course, that as, a, as a lecturer, you put the work in, in terms of what you're doing with the students in the classroom. Lucky us that we've got the options, and mm -hmm. lucky us that you have the time for the interview. Thanks. Thanks to you so Thanks much. So much. There you go.